So I'm here with Joe Selecki. Joe is fighting Austin Hubbard uh, in a couple weeks in Vegas. Joe, thanks for joining me, man. How are you doing? I'm great, man. Yeah, ready to uh, finally get to do this fight. You know, it was supposed to happen a little while ago, but yeah, uh, pretty cool that he still got to fight that weekend and we get rebooked. So we all we all win, you know, so it's good. So what happened with you in that fight? I know you had to pull out. What was the issue there? Yeah, I had a positive COVID test. I was fine. Oh, my um, gosh. Yeah, I was just a little run down, like a little extra. It wasn't anything severe. You know, I'm young, I'm healthy, I'm very fortunate in that sense. But uh, just didn't want to go out there. I, just, I felt off, but not, again, I fought sicker than that before with a cold or, you know, flu type symptoms at the beginning of fight week and been fine. Um, but with everything going on, I was just trying to do the responsible thing, make sure I had a reason. Am I, okay, am I under recovered or am I sick? So I just went to CBS, got a test, and then I had to. It was my last sparring session that I was on the way to that Friday, so like eight days out, that I got the results back from from the doctor. So, um, ter- felt terrible about. I never had to pull out of a fight, so um, unfortunate. But it's pretty cool we got rebooked. So good to go well, now. Yeah, definitely. You don't want to risk the COVID, man. You never exactly. know how that can happen. Yeah. It's a socially responsible thing, you know. I'm not gonna fly knowing that I'm sick or go infect other people. It's terrible. So uh, right. as soon as we found out, I told everybody I needed to, and then. Got my negative test results right afterward, and we were good to go. Well, that's great. I'm happy to see you two book because when they announced this matchup, I'm like, holy crap, that's a good fight because Austin's durable, man. Austin's a real good fighter. He's he's fun to watch, and so are you. Um, and I think this is one of those stylistic matchups that really that brings a lot for the fans. I don't think they recognize what they're getting into with you two guys. Um, so so what's your mindset up at coming into this fight, man? What are you, how, How's your training? What are you thinking? Game plan, if you want to divulge it. Let, give me the rundown. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's been great. I, I've been in camp since since March because I was told to stay ready for April or May originally before COVID, then COVID hit. And then I was told probably May or June. So I got right into training camp thinking June was 12 weeks away and it ended up being June. It was like right at the 12-week mark. I had to pull out. But then because some other teammates had it as well, we were able to get off on the side in a garage and just train together. You know, I made the joke like we were the undesirables. We were like, you know, quarantining together so we could still train. So I didn't miss a beat. I've been training for a fight, maybe not Hubbard. A couple of the weeks for Hubbard, a couple of the weeks for some other names that were getting thrown around. Um, but I've been in a training camp for over 20 weeks, you know, right, right at 20 weeks, 21 weeks right now. So uh, if I can't be ready after this, you know, Hubbard's right. better than me. And I can, I can live with that, you know. But I've done everything I possibly can. Um, did a good job of kind of riding the wave as far as not being, not coming in as overtrained at all. I feel great. I feel absolutely sharp and ready to go, best I've ever felt. And, um, it's been great. You know, as far as game plan, what you said, he's super durable. He's a tough guy. Um, he looked great in the last fight, you know, and um, just look forward to testing myself against somebody like that. I think there's a lot of areas that I can shine against him, you know, but he's that kind of guy, kind of like Wyman was, but he's a lot younger and, and a more evolved fighter than Wyman. But that same thing where you're like, this guy's going to be here for 15 minutes unless I put his lights out, you know, whether it be a choke or a, or a KO. So, um, I know who I'm dealing with. You know, I said that before, and same thing here. I know exactly who's in front of me with a tough, tough dude. You seem like the type of person who takes a lot of uh, pride in your game planning. Is that something that you'd like to do in your camp? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I probably spend 90% of the time on me and 10% on them. That being said, I'm never going to go into something. You'll never hear me sound like, um, not uneducated about it, but ignorant in the sense of like, I don't care who's in front of me. Like, I definitely do. I, I want to know what to expect. You know, if this guy has a tendency to do A or B and I can – capitalize with C I need to know that so um I don't obsess over it I don't watch a ton of tape but I watch enough to know what I'm getting into just to see who's gonna be in front of me and then let my coaches come up with the game plan and I'm a listener dude I I listen to whatever they tell me to do I'm gonna do everything I can to listen because why would I have coaches if I'm not gonna listen to them it's just insane so um definitely prepared definitely have a good game plan I believe more of a template than a game plan you know we got to go out there fighting isn't any other sport with X's and O's where it's going to go this way. So um, I've got to fill in the gaps, and I think that's where I, I really shine. Awesome. So you mentioned earlier the uh, undesirable club. So <laughs> is that what training under COVID has been like for you? Just uh, just that that week where we were sick. You know, we all got our negative test results pretty pretty quickly after that. So, um, no, it hasn't been too bad. You know, ever since they let athletes train down here in North Carolina, we've been good. So we were able to – that's the other thing is going into the first Hubbard fight that didn't happen – Um, we were kind of cramming in our double sessions instead of coming morning, afternoon, night, all that. We were kind of getting it all at night because we had to sneak into the gym, um, right around maybe two weeks before what would have been my first fight this summer, uh, is when they said pro athletes could train. So now we've, 
I mean, on top of the first 12 weeks of a regular camp, we were just cramming, getting a little extra tired because it was longer sessions instead of more sessions. Um, now we were back to our full routine. So I was able to go up to Charlotte uh, and train at, you know, Jim O with all those guys and um, get down to my boxing coach in Myrtle Beach. So everything's been a whole nother training camp on top of what I had of my normal routine. So it's been great. It's, it hasn't been too bad. So Matt Wyman, you talked about that a second ago here, man. Um, how happy were you with that performance? I thought you looked very good. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Um, I, I was happy with it. You know, um, there's always, and I always do this just because of how I, it's how I live my whole life, I guess. But I, I just credit myself in some senses. There's some things I could have done better. Um, and, you know, he was on, you know, coming off a loss or two. So definitely on the tail end of his career, you know, that's no secret. So um, it'll be good to get in there against another prospect and test myself against somebody. Not overlooking, you know, one day I'll probably look back and be like, oh, it was awesome. I fought a guy with 17 fights in the UFC. And I still think it was great. And I felt great, but there's a lot of areas I could have done a lot better. So um, right. it'd be good to not have those questions about, oh, well, this guy wasn't active in the last couple of years or, or anything that I could, you know, it was great to get out there, get a win in the UFC, dream come true for sure. But um, with every win, I feel like the stakes are higher and higher and higher. So uh, now I just have my work cut out for me and a guy like me who's really young, really hungry. And um, we're going to both kind of have that dog in us for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's going to be a fun fight for sure. Yeah. Um, it, like, like you said, two really, really good prospects. Um, what, what are your career goals right now, man? What, what is, what is your eyes? Say? I mean, I know you said on the Hubbard fight right now, but like, mm -hmm. what do you feel like, what are you working towards? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if I didn't want to be a world champion, I should turn in my contract and go find a way to do something else. You know, that's, <laughs> that's the very, very top of the pyramid. But the way I look at it is like the hierarchy of needs, right? So that's my, that's my, that's my epitome of my whole career is to get there one day. But right now I've got Hubbard in front of me. So that's the most important, you know, I always say keeping my job is number one. And that means training as hard mm -hmm. as I can, winning fights, performing well, even on the fights, maybe some fights aren't going to go your way, but showing what you can do, even in the losses, you know, I don't, I'm trying to minimize that as much as possible. Um, but just showing up to work every single day, getting better, keeping my job, feeding my family, climbing the ranks is then above that. And then at the very top is, is, you know, world title and, if I didn't want to be a world champion, especially I'm in the UFC very young right now, I'm 26 years old. So if I didn't have that on the horizon, it, it would be time to hang it up at 26, you know, and I, um, that's, I've been wanting that since I'm a little kid. So that's the very <laughs> top, I, you know, Hubbard's in front of me. So I don't look past that at all. I'll never look past anybody, never have. And, uh, but down the line, you know, of course, that's, that's always on my mind every single day. That's why I get up when I don't have a fight and train really hard. And you're in such a stacked division. There's so many fun matchups for you, especially you. You're a really good grappler, man. What do you feel like you bring to the table in this deep, deep, lightweight division? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I grew up doing jiu-jitsu and grappling. But that being said, it was always with MMA in mind. And I've been a lifelong martial artist. You know, I even used to do like karate and stuff when I was a kid. So I've always been involved in martial arts. I was always watching the UFC. Um, and then ever since I moved to the, uh, to the South, to the Carolinas, I was involved in MMA gyms, even when I wasn't, I was grappling competitively. I wasn't fighting yet. So I've been around the sport and been involved in the sport my entire life. So I think I bring that new generation of, you know, blending everything together. Like, I don't think I'm not going to win any world titles in jiu-jitsu anytime soon. You know, it's a very different game than we bring <laughs> to MMA. But my MMA jiu-jitsu, I think I could beat a lot of guys that might be winning or placing in the worlds, but I could beat them in MMA on the ground, you know? Um, so I think I could do stuff like that, you know, and really shock some people when you think I'm doing one thing, I'm going to do another. And, and, you know, fighting is ultimately deception, right? It's, that's why we fake and we faint, we level change and we do all these things. So I think the way I'll put it together is what makes me special. So anyways, I think you touched on something very important there. This is the first real generation of fighters that is MMA fighters. A lot of them came in as karate guys, wrestlers and stuff like that. So I think that's the future of the sport. Do you? Oh yeah, absolutely. I, but that being said, is we've got to keep, like sometimes you get guys that don't do jiu-jitsu, you know, or maybe they do it once a week and, they never really learn. Like when you get them in a practice where you're on the mats, like their whole thing is not getting there. So I think it's important to keep, you know, you see guys like, uh, I mean, all, I follow a bunch of, you know, higher level, higher ranked guys on like Instagram and stuff. And you'll see like Frank Yeager's in a boxing gym working out or they boxing spar still, or they still wrestle at a college. I think it's important to keep that, but it's important to be able to blend them all together too. And people couldn't do that in the past. They'd only do one thing. Now, you know, everybody is wrestling with college wrestlers boxing with boxers and doing jiu-jitsu and then you have your practice where you put it all together and i think as long as we keep that and keep becoming experts in each thing and not just 
good at putting it all together, yeah, I think that's the future for sure. Awesome. So at the top of your division, Khabib is getting ready to fight Justin Gaethje in, I think, the best lightweight fight of all time. Yeah. Um, how's that fight go down? Who wins it and how? Man, it's, it's weird. When you watch these guys be unbeatable for so long, I used to do it with Anderson Silva. Also, I fought like Anderson kind of cocky. <laughs> and uh, like I, I didn't like like I was a Damian Maya fan because he was a jiu-jitsu guy and <laughs> yeah. him. So ever since then, he could do no right in my book. So I'd always be like, this next guy is the guy to beat him. And it never was, you know, until Weidman. Um, that being said, I don't think it's the same thing with Khabib. Cause I like Khabib. I like watching him fight. I think it's incredible. But it's so hard to pick against Gaethje, even though Khabib has been so dominant. He just he looked unbeatable, you know, in the last fight and the fight before that, really. Um, so I'll take the underdog. I'll take Gaethje. But it would not shock me at all if Khabib does what Khabib does and then goes and beats GSP and then walks off in the sunset, which would be great to see. But um, Gaethje's an animal. He's fighting so intelligently. And uh, that's a scary guy right now. Awesome. Joe, I appreciate your time, man. Where can everybody find you on social media? Oh, man, just on uh, Facebook. I have an athlete page, Joe Selecki MMA. Uh, Instagram is just at Joe Selecki and then Twitter. Uh, I don't use too much. I'll post them, like some fight nights and stuff, but, uh, at Joe Selecki as well, man, they can follow me there. And, uh, I always try to, you know, post pretty regularly and keep everybody up to date. So that's it. You're, you're the man, brother. I'll be talking to you down the road. Good luck. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm excited about this fight. Thanks so much, man. Thanks for having me on. You too. Have All a right. good one. Bye.